Welcome to Kicking It Local, the podcast all about the football community in South Australia. I'm your host, Johnny Kecko, and today I am kicking it comfortably, all thanks to Macron Sports Hub, providing clubs and sports podcasters with their team wear needs. Macron store, adelaide.com.au to find out more. And today I am joined by the co-founder of Front Page Football and also a local football journalist in South Australia, Christian Marchetti. Thank you for joining me. Good to be here, Johnny. Um... Not uh, not often that I get to be not anymore anyway. Be like the guest on a podcast, so it's nice to, nice change of pace. Yeah, you're normally hosting your own podcast now. Now, now with, I am. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, which is it's been different for me the last kind of twelve months or so to kind of get into the hosting role and, and do that. So yeah. How do you find it getting to talk to him instead of writing articles? How do you find it talking? Yeah, to I. I think you prefer it from a sense that you know, like you don't have to like when you do an interview. You interview someone, then you have to go through the interview, get all your quotes down, then write up the piece. But when like you're podcasting, you're kind of there. Yeah. You know, you've got your interviewee there, you're talking, and then the next day you upload it. Or yeah. So so it's probably easier. But you know, then it's also a podcast. So, you know, you want to be like a good talker and a good speaker. So yeah. Yeah, it's good fun, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. Face really to face is always my favourite. So, mm. but it's good to have you on board. There's a lot to talk about. We were just talking a bit off air about your story, and there's so much to talk about. Yeah, it's quite. Weird. And how old are you again? <laughs> I'm 20. 20. Yeah. You're only 20. Uh, yeah. So you're eight years younger than me, and you've done so much already, which is great. Um, and I can't wait to get through all this. Um, talking about your front page football, you worked at LA City for a bit as a media coordinator. Yeah. Um, you also have done so much stuff, especially especially doing uh, uh, coaching now as well at Campbelltown City. Yeah, yeah. So I've uh, been a juniors coach at Campbelltown for this is my fourth year. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, well, I can't wait to get through it all. You've been on many uh, press conferences as well. I want to talk about one of the first <laughs> questions you asked um, at one of those as well to kick it all off in uh, Marco Kurtz's uh, reign at LA United. But let's go straight into the, the early stages of um, mm-hmm. journalism. What led you into becoming a journalist as opposed to following playing football? Yeah. So it probably actually goes all the way back. So when I was like younger, younger, probably, you know, talking five, six, seven, eight, these sorts of years. I didn't really, I wasn't really that interested in sport full stop when I was really young. So, um, but then kind of probably through my dad who used to play, um, used to play for Blue Eagles in the reserves and stuff. And then he made a few appearances for the first team as well. So he was a massive, you know, massively into his Australian mm-hmm. football. Um, he indoctrinated me to become a Chelsea <laughs> fan. I don't want to talk about them too much at the moment. But um, <laughs> yeah, basically from there, I kind of then piqued my interest with football but also sport in general so when i was kind of 9 10 11 like every day would be get up fox sports on the tv straight yeah. away and i'd just be consuming everything that's going on so um i watched them obviously last weekend with the showdown but i was you know i used to be a massive adelaide crows fan watch every game this that, and the other um you know when the ashes was on i'd watch the cricket all the time uh tennis i used to play tennis i played for quite many years, like eight years when I was younger. So I was a bit of, you know, sports fanatic. Uh, a lot of my family used to say, oh, you know, when I'd come up with some stat or something like yeah. at a family event, it's like, oh, here's Bruce McAvaney and stuff <laughs> like that. It's like, okay, let's pump the brakes. But, um, you know, yeah, like, so that kind of really piqued my interest and I really enjoyed talking about sport and stuff. And then kind of as the years w- kind of went on, you start to, and I mean, even, you know, you probably say this with, with this podcast, like you start to find a niche, yeah, right? So, and then... I, you know, and also with with Australian football and how it's like this constant, you know, desire to make it, you know, more interesting for everyone and more popular and and you know, uh, more I guess exciting for the Australian mm. public, um, you know, and it becomes also like about promoting the game and stuff. So yeah, we we eventually now with with front page football, you know, I uh, found kind of my niche with just focusing on Australian football and promoting as much as possible. So there's been two phases of front page football. The mm. second phase is what it's in now. Yeah. First phase started in 2016 yeah. alongside Leo James who. Many would know of him being the MC for Football South Australia mm. for many years. I reckon he started when he was like 13, 14. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's an interesting thing. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit probably about like my friendship with Leo because we both... Leo is a real go-getter um, and he mm. started earlier than me with all this stuff. Like I think if you... And I remember it was funny when when he left because uh, now he's obviously working in Melbourne Victory and when he left his role with Football SA and, and they did a massive post on the social media, which I thought was really nice touch. Uh, and on there, you can actually see Leo, a 14-year-old Leo, I'm pretty sure, yeah. like MCing. So, and he was, 
it's funny because it's something that I'm really doing, you know, what I've been doing for the last couple of years with FPF and that's, you know, like sending emails out to people, reaching out, you know, making connections, mm. just saying that. But he, he was doing that since he was like 13, 14. So, you know, it's, it's crazy to think of that. But I think it was cool because both of us, you know, were kind of going through our journeys at the same time a little bit, you know, both trying to, <clears throat> you know, do something in, in football yep. and in media as well. So, I remember seeing him around yeah. for many years before meeting him, but... Mm. The first the closest I've got to him was when he was uh, emceeing at uh, LA Giant, or LA Bite at the time, I yeah, think it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he left, and I I went in the next year as a, the MC, mm. and I was taking over a 14 year old that was <laughs> better than me. So uh, it was a bit intimidating. <laughs> I was intimidated by a 14 year old, but he was so good. And yeah. watching him grow over the years mm. at the Football South Australia events and all that was incredible to watch. Now look at him over in Melbourne Victory. Yeah, no, and he's and, as a media uh, and, hasn't been an easy season. Uh, no, it hasn't. Him, obviously, well, not an easy start either. No, no, but he's doing a he's doing a great job there. Um, so yeah, there you go. So it all started from creating a passion and then getting into what he's doing now. But for yourself, that yeah. early stages of creating front page football, what did it mean to you guys to to start something like that? Because yeah, a lot of, there's a lot of avenues where you can go and um, there's different uh, place publications that young journalists can go are yeah. ready to. They're established. What made you guys create a brand new one from scratch? And how, wait, twenty six? Well, no, twenty sixteen. That's what uh, seven years ago now. So you yep. would have been only thirteen years old when you guys when you started it. Thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, I would have been. So I'm younger. I was younger than like my year level. At yeah. School, so I would have been year nine, something like that. Right at the start, it was called uh, football footage, and what it was was Leo basically like editing and kind yeah. of putting videos together some often about Adelaide United and stuff as well. Um, and he used to put some stuff together. Um, but then, yeah, like we, I, I don't actually, uh, it's so long ago as well. So I can't really remember exactly how it kind of started, but I think we were trying to kind of look out for, you know, can we write for different sites and stuff? And it wasn't really, now it's different. Now you've got like FTBL, um, you know, the football sack doing internships, um, kick 360, mm. you know, there's, there's a few sites out there, but Back then, it was it was very a very new. There's thing. a lot of broader ones though, but it wasn't yeah. no football related ones. That's right. Yeah. That's right. No like specific. football specific yeah. or Australian football specific sort of thing. So we just said, yeah, let's let's start our own. Um, and Leo, from a young age, was very good with the you know graphics and web design and stuff like that. So that sort of thing was yep. Yeah, you know, you do that. Mm. I'm, I'm happy for you to do that. <laughs> and I'll I'll get my ideas in my head and, and get on the writing side. So I'd basically, there were periods there where, and Leo got more busy with other stuff he was doing and I'd just get up every day and, okay, what's happening in football? Write some kind of report. Yeah. Publish it. Yeah. So, and just, just go like that. And you basically, and it wasn't, and it wasn't about, it actually, then it's not so much about the views or anything like that. It was just about, writing basically and, and getting comfortable with writing you know about football so yeah the you also had a, t um, a radio show on Italian radio station yeah. community station at the time as well what was that like to be involved in that um, as yeah. t young teenagers as well yeah so that was so basically what happened was uh, the initial phase of FPF was uh, 2016 to about mid 2018 um, and then Basically, Leo, because um, he was also doing some work with, with FTBL at the time as well, so it became harder for him to kind of keep the site going and stuff. But but I think also we were both really interested in getting into radio and just doing something different. So, yeah, we reached out to, to Radio Italiana. Um, and at the time, uh, Paul Marcucci was there, who, who obviously does uh, mm. some commentary with, with the, the WNPL. Um, and the station manager at the time, Rob DeChocco, he was really good at the time with... Um, yeah, kind of guiding us and, and showing us what we need to do. And again, <laughs> you know, I was basically happy to go there and provide my commentary on things. And Leo was operating the console and, and doing that sort of stuff. So we had, it was great because we had a prime time slot, basically four till six on a Friday. Okay. Yeah. yeah. To start off with. Um, so basically we'd rush from school, go there, <laughs> get changed. You know, Leo and stuff would have the agenda ready to go. We'd kind of discuss it during the day. Um, and yeah get on and, and talk about football. We, yeah, we had to talk about some other sports, of course, um, to make it a bit more kind of general. Um, but we were, we, you know, it was great because we were given the license to kind of talk more about, you know, the A-League and stuff because that's, that's really what we were passionate about. And then, and then um, I think with, with study and stuff, we, 
we kind of thought it might be better to do it on the weekend uh, instead. So we moved to a three till five on a Saturday. Um, and I remember one episode, we actually had Terrence Carter on one episode okay. uh, as a guest. Um, so yeah, this is Asia Guys was when he was, yeah, like playing and stuff for Comets, I believe at the time. So yeah. yeah uh, and then we had three till five, but then, you know, and then year 12 comes along and, and this, you know, this stuff becomes harder to kind of keep up to the standard that you want as yeah. well. So yeah. So you had to call it quits. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we called it quits. Uh, we we did our year twelve studies, um, and yeah, and then uni and, and whatnot. With starting it up, how? What were some of the difficulties? Because it is intimidating. Just at the, the radio. Start. The radio. Yeah, with the, yeah, with the with the radio and also with the with front FPF. page. Yeah. yeah, FPF. What was the difficulties like uh, in those stages? Because I know when I was starting, I felt intimidated reaching out to people for when I was doing my sports mm. show up in the Adelaide Hills. Um, and then reaching out with this podcast as well to people I've never met before. Yeah. How'd you get over that, especially as a teenager? Well, so the first part of FPF and also the radio stuff, it probably wasn't... This second phase is different because I'm basically running it more like we're trying to be a you know, a proper professional publication, mm-hmm. which you should be, you know, I think you should be doing. But whereas the first time was more about us just getting our name out there and writing and this sort of stuff. So it was more like, you know match reports on yep. this sort of game or you know and less kind of interviews and things like that um and we just wanted to get an experience with radio mm. you know and getting behind the mic of course um and also with the writing for me in particular was to just you know just to write and kind of also because i was just so passionate about it at that time probably i, I don't know probably the same yeah what i am now but you know i just had that so much passion where i just get up every day and write an article like just every day so there you yeah go. yeah <laughs> well the relaunch in 2020 august mm. uh is where you started again but without leo this time yeah what was the reason behind it yeah so so um we both finished in, in 2019 uh, with our studies and then i went straight into uni in 2020 uh, with with my journalism degree, and in the second half of that year, one of the assignments, of one of the subjects, was to create your own blog. And my mind always, with most things, just goes straight to okay, football. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So there's that. Um, but then I was just thinking, I mean, and I, I since we stopped it in 2018, I was always thinking about like you know we had something good there, like you know maybe we should kind of do I re revisit it and stuff like that and i just thought well this is a great opportunity to do that so i said to i reached out to leo and i said look they you know it's a uni assignment to create a blog and i'm thinking of restarting fpf and he's like yeah go for it so from now i started it um and i had to redo it for like the uni assignment but then what actually happened is i kind of um through kind of you know a loss of motivation and stuff with uni um i kind of dropped out a little bit at the end of that year um but i kept going with fpf so it was weird because it was meant to be restarted for this uni assignment yet i stopped the uni and i just kept doing that so you know um it's yeah kind of funny how it all came about um and with yeah what happened was i was kind of just again it came back to kind of me just writing my stuff and getting it out there then I had um, a young writer in Newcastle uh, reach out to me uh, because then I was thinking, okay, well, I want to make this, let's actually make this serious. So that, that's kind of what I said to myself. And let's see if I can get some other guys on board, um, you know, and by this time I've got a few more connections and stuff and, and we can kind of, you know, run this a bit more, you know, pro- properly like a proper publication. So yeah, uh, and uh, Tom, Tom was his name out in um, Newcastle when he reached out to me and was like, oh yeah, you know, like we're doing... Um, you know, wouldn't mind writing some articles. I'm like, yeah, go for it. And he came on and um, just, yeah, he's, he's writing 24-7 as well. And he loved it and stuff like that. And then later on, I got another guy from New South Wales and it just kind of spiraled from there. How so, many yeah. writers you got now in total? We've got almost... So, the team is almost 15 uh, yeah. now. So, writers would be around 10 or so. Yeah. Um, so, and... There, it's all differing degrees. So my goal is for it to be basically what me and Leo didn't have. So basically somewhere where you've got guys who are in high school or in uni and they really love Australian football, mm. you know, it might be locally, it might be A-League, it might be Socceroos, whatever it is, and they just want to write about it and they want to learn more about it. But also I think because now I've been doing stuff, you know, for... Um, for quite a while now and also like I'm learning a bit more of course with my degree uh, I think I can also pass on some knowledge 
So I try and do that as well in my role as kind of an editor and stuff and, and, and this, that and the other. Um, but also we've also got kind of writers who, you know, like, like Antonis, who's been on this pod before, who, um, you know, he works full time, but he writes as a hobby. So, and I think that's great. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Um, and you just got that different kind of different perspectives from everywhere. And, and I've got guys, you know, I've got a guy <coughs> in Tasmania, I've got a guy in Canberra, um, you know, and you can, yeah, you get an understanding of kind of football in these places, yeah. you know, and, and, um, yeah, it's, well, it's just it's just different, and it's and it's fun. It's good to listen to. Absolutely, and well, T- Antonis is one of those unique yeah. people that lives and breathes local football. Yeah, he is at every game, no matter what game I go to. He's Antonis' there. Saturday <laughs> is three p.m., five p.m., seven p.m., and p.m. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, and <laughs> reserves as well. So yeah. He's at the LA United Reserves, LA United um, MPL team, mm. LA United A League, <laughs> um, and then any other game in between. I even saw him at a nine nine AM game as well of a juniors match, which is his uh, cousin. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's right. but it's that's how dedicated he is. He will go is. to any single game. I remember once I was meant to go to a family friends kids uh, junior mm. match. I think it was nine thirty on a Sunday morning. Mm. Then I worked out it was streaming, so I watched it in my room, just in my bed. Couldn't be bothered getting out of the bed. Really? They were streaming it. <laughs> they were streaming it. Yeah, they yeah, were. Right. So I managed to watch that. So I wasn't as dedicated as in that morning. <laughs> I was a little bit tired, but uh, I think I was up uh, editing a pod that night. But yeah. that's how dedicated you got some of these people out there going mm-hmm. out to these games and um, and writing those articles. How have you feel, felt now where it is? Because when you started, it was just a hobby with uh, with Leo. Then the second phase was just a project for uni, and now it's become something that's helping people get into probably, that area. It's, it's probably something that I put on equal footing with uni now. Yeah. Um, and I actually, now the way I look at uni is more, um, what can I take from uni to actually improve FPF? Um, you know, as, and, you know, I've got, now it's kind of changing to, okay, how far can this thing go? Could we, you know, could this become like a proper business that I just, you know, after I get my degree, I just keep going with mm. it and, and do that? I don't know. So, you know, that's kind of a wait and see. Um, but it's just been like, you know, to see like every day, you know, we're posting stuff on Twitter and, and people are interacting with it. People are responding. And, and that's that's what we want. Mm. Like we want to create conversations in Australian football, you know, because um, we... And me, more specifically, I just think that even and and you know a lot of people, a lot of kind of the 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 Australian football media at the moment is kind of hamstrung by you know just kind of the general lack of interest in in general and stuff. But um, we're in a position where because we're kind of freelancers, we can be a bit, I guess, less regulated in the way that we kind of cover the game. Um, and I think a lot of people kind of appreciate if you listen to some of our podcasts, how we're a bit more like kind of saying it, how is it, how it is, mm. you know, um, like we, the, the Wanderers Adelaide game on Friday and there was that big incident with, with Nesta and, and Marcelo and stuff. Um, and, and we just did a social media post yesterday or the day before where we clipped something that Antonis said in it, um, in a quote and it just kind of blew up and, yeah. and you know, and, and Lockie Bar had the headlock. Yeah, and- yeah. Oh, which was just fantastic, <laughs> you know, and, and all the Wanderers fans coming in the comments and having gone and turn us, but you know, that's, it's fine if you can if you can handle the heat, then it's fine, and yeah. it's good. You know, we want that. So yeah, the heat is um is not great to handle sometimes because sometimes yeah. it's out of context and it's not great from uh, yeah. some of the people. How do you deal with that as a journalist um, having to look at some of those comments well, and yeah, I think for for me now it's more about uh, protecting the brand of the site uh, and making sure you know whatever we're whatever we're posting, you know, have we you know are you considering all sides of the argument, mm. you know, or are you just kind of letting your personal biases get in the way? Because if that's the case, well, you know, go post on your personal Twitter. You know what I mean? So there, there's there's an element of that, but I think we do a really good job. I do, you know, and of course I'm going to say that, but, you know, I, I think that most <laughs> of our content tries to be as unbiased as possible. Mm. Um, and, you know, I, I encourage the guys, you know, when they're doing opinions on, you know, uh, it might be on A-League crowds or whatever, like, you know, reach out to people, like see if you can get different sides of this argument, you know, present it in a, in a way yep. that's, that's just, you know, so uh, that's, that's really important. Well, as part of a journalist, you get to go to some cool things, you get to go to press conferences as well, which mm-hmm. is um, some people would love to get be involved yep. in that. I hear you were there um, at LA United press conferences after games as a, as a teenager 
And one of the first ones you well, you were out a lot, but one of the first ones where you got to ask the question was you were a bit shy in asking the very first question to open up the press conference because normally you get one person that asks that first question. Mm-hmm. Um, you always hear it. It's normally the same person. I think in Adelaide a few years back, it used to be Val Midliaccio, always used to ask that first question. Um, but in this instance for you, Marco Kurtz, I think he got a little bit of a... Um, a whisper in the year to to point you out in this uh, in this press conference after a game. Yeah, how did that all come yeah. about? What was that like? Yeah, well, I'll explain the background in terms of kind of. So I started. Uh, this was before, or it might have been around the same time of that first kind of phase of FPF we're talking about, where I was also writing for, for FTBL as well. Um, and FTBL is a recognised publication, mm. so I was able to get my accreditation and 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 um and um you know ten press conferences at Adelaide United home games. Um and yeah, when you first when you first go in for a press conference and you've never kind of asked a question before and you're kind of sitting in a room with grown men uh, and it's dead silent and particularly if Adelaide have lost a game and you know you know what Marco was like yeah. back in those days as well, um, it's it's pretty intimidating. Yeah. Um, so at first, honestly, the first few press conferences, I just sat there and just kind of you how, just listen. And how old were you of, back then? Would have been about 15. Yep. Probably. Oh, yeah. You would have definitely been intimidated. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, uh, um, and I'm not the, you know, biggest socialite either. So, so there's that eat as well. Um, and you're just kind of sitting and just, you know, just listening. Okay. Mm. What types of questions are they asking? This sort of thing. And then eventually, you, you know, you got to take the leap. You know, you got to take the leap where, and it, at first, it'll be at the end of a press conference and you'll just throw in some kind of, it might even be a throwaway question, but who cares? You know, yeah. you've got to get the, you got to get comfortable asking questions. So um, that's what I started doing. Uh, anyway, um, through um, this event um, that that was that was going on, my, my dad actually got the chance to meet um, Marco uh, Marco Kurz. So um, basically, he explained to him, you know, uh, yeah, my son, you know, he goes to press conferences and stuff like that. And he's, and I think Marco, I can't remember. I think he did say, so, oh yeah, yeah, like you know, I know there's a young kid kind of in there and stuff like that. So anyway, the next day, Adelaide United are playing at home. So, um, I think it was Melbourne City or, or something or other, um, and after the game, and they must have won, and that, that's why he must have been a good move. Yeah, they must have won. <laughs> you have to. I mean? Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> then we come in, he comes in, we're all sitting down and stuff, and he points at me and he goes, hey, you're the son? Uh, <laughs> and, you know, and I go, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like really kind of awkwardly and embarrassingly, and um, one of the other journalists kind of said to me, yeah you know, you ask the first question sort of thing. And I was like, okay, you know, and I just asked the standard sort of, you know, what were your thoughts on, on the win and stuff. So, yeah, yeah, it was, uh, that was, that was pretty cool, yeah. If they didn't push you, would you have reckon it would have taken a little bit longer for you to ask that first question? I think it's, I think what you've got to consider is that um, even now, like I don't ask the first press, the first question mm. in press conferences because there's also, you know, there's also seniority which comes with yeah. kind of journalism as well. So when there's guys there that have, you know, um, been writing, you know, since like you know, maybe the nineties or something, but also like they've got really well connected and they're writing also um, for like kind of hard news sites like a Fox Sports or, yeah. or this that, and the other. There's kind of a, almost like an unwritten rule that you know you let them kind of lead and stuff. Um, but what's actually been good is on the off chance, you know, at the moment with Carl and stuff that with the pre-match kind of press conferences and and usually that's harder for the other media to get there so sometimes you know i'll go there and it might just be me and uh you know jordan the, the adelaide media manager or or me and one other journalist so then i can really kind of you know drive yeah. the conversation so yeah you know it's it, it kind of varies um but you know i it, it's i'm definitely a lot more confident now for sure back uh back in those days yeah. you're a reds fan prior to this yeah so when I mean, obviously, growing up and stuff, and once I really got into the A League and stuff, yeah, I, I supported and followed LA United quite heavily. How did you find it being a LA United fan? Because I know what me personally, growing mm. up as an LA United fan, that's where I found football um, back in 20, 2005. So that's almost yeah. 20 years ago now. Yeah. Far out. I know, <laughs> I'm close. getting old. I know. Um, but then looking at that now, and I was growing up and watching it, and then watching Jared Walsh at the games, and yeah. now being it there and doing stuff like mm. this in the game. I sit back and go, wow, mm. now I'm doing what these media people were doing back then. How do you find it when you're now looking at your, it's an, almost an every week occasion now where you go to a game, mm. um, press conferences, and you're just natural now. You're there asking questions. Mm-hmm. What, what's, how, do you, like, how do you feel about that now, thinking back about it? Uh, I think you don't really realize it. 
Like mm. you kind of just you kind of just transition into your next kind of phase. Yeah. You know, and you you leave the fan side and you go into the yeah. media side. You know. Um. And I think what's interesting now is I mean you know we were all there when when Adelaide won in 2016 mm. in the grand final and how great of occasion that was and like Craig Goodman played in that game. And yeah. Now it's like when Craig Goodman got caught up for Socceroos for the World Cup. Like I was at that press conference the like the day after. And then afterwards, like you're on the pitch and Craig put his Socceroos top on and like Antonis was there as well. And we're kind of just taking pictures of Craig with the Socceroos kit. And it's just kind of like, wow, okay, you know, this is pretty cool. Like Craig Goodman's like, yeah, you know, five meters away from me. And, you know, <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, from that perspective, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. But I don't think you, I don't think you take advantage of it either. No. Like you understand that when you're there, you know, you've got a job to do. Mm. Like your, your media, you're not, you're not there to, you know, uh, fanboy over, you know, mm. players. Uh, so, yeah. It's, um yeah, because I think it's made for certain people because I, I don't fanboy anymore. Mm. Or, I don't know if I ever used to, but <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it's it, it's surreal to, to see what it's like to be in that position now. And mm. um, sometimes you've, oh, for me personally, I don't know if it's the same for you, but yeah. you think, wow, how did I get to this point? And mm. all the work is paying off to be able to... For me, it's more like, I think back... And for example, like it might be um, how I got an accreditation or how I got certain interviews. Mm. Like, how did that happen again? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, almost like, was that, that was a bit lucky or was that, like, I don't, you know, so mm. um, I'm, look, I'm, I'm fortunate that I've kind of grown up in an environment where a lot of the people, you know, a lot of, um, you know, whether it's my dad or, or other people, you know, friends and stuff that they kind of already been involved, you know, yep. in the game. So that kind of helps for sure when you're getting into into journalism. Yeah. Well, talking about your journalism as well, you moved into a role as a media coordinator back in 2022, which is last yep. season, last year um, at Adelaide City. Yeah. So Adelaide City during that year, probably the biggest year to, to be involved at Adelaide City. Back to back champions, triple um, winning year, and also well, the the year in Australia Cup. As yeah, well. well, well, Johnny, you have to look at it like this. I came on board and we won all three trophies. So <laughs> I mean, you know, it kind of speaks for itself, really. And you're very competitive against Adelaide City as well in the uh, LA United. Yeah, uh, sorry, LA United yeah, yeah. in the uh, round of sixteen, which is a massive game in the history of local football. That was that was um, unbelievable to be a part of, um, and it was. <laughs> It was one of those where the two weeks leading into it, um, like late nights, mm. you know, um, and putting, and it was also like a lot of pressure because, you know, from an Adelaide United standpoint, um, you know, like it's still a big game for them, but, you know, there's not as much pressure in the marketing and the advertising mm. as like Adelaide City. And for me as well, um, you know, I was very grateful to be given that opportunity. Um, and, but, I never really like I had some experience doing it and and now I do it every day with the site kind of coordinating you know yep. writers and coordinating social media creators and stuff like that but I to do it at a club level like that and you know you have to you know you have to talk to players and like kind of tell them hey you know I'd like to do an interview and stuff like that um you know also dealing with Pez who <laughs> but you know he was fantastic he yep. was absolutely fantastic and I know <laughs> you know I know Pez has got that reputation of kind of being you know a bit of a hard man and stuff like that but he was always available mm -hmm. uh, he always made himself available um and 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 for that I was really grateful but um it was uh, I came in late uh in January um of the year and you know we hadn't done our player announcements yet of the signings. So that was priority one. And then like the first day kind of came on board and I got like four emails within the space of like, you know, like an hour or so. And I'm kind of thinking, what's going on? I thought this was like, a, you know, this was the casual job. Um, so, but, and it was almost like from that day on, I kind of, it's almost like you leave that, you know, that kind of teenage phase of your life and now it's like you're getting into okay now it's like people need to depend on you mm. you're being employed by people you're you know and and you need to kind of move on with life in that sense but yeah and for me as well i knew how big a role it was and i know how big of a club adelaide city is so i put a lot of pressure on myself um and i really stretched the limits of what we could do from a social media standpoint uh with the <coughs> programs uh that we had as well um um also with our photographer brenton who does a fantastic job um for, for adelaide city and also paul rapici the graphic designer and we and we basically said look and i'm more or less said to them you know i want us to kind of every day like we need to be active you know something's got to go out there you know you know um and you know because we're a massive football club so and that's that was our goal and i think that we achieved that over the year but that Adelaide United game, I mean, 
the amount of pressure for me on putting that program together for that game. Like, you know, there's going to be 3,000 people at this mm. game. You know, um, we're going to print off, I think we print off like 200 copies of the program, you know, and making sure, you know, all the stories are good. And what was I, what was actually good about that and what helped from the writing side is there were so many connections with the two teams because, you know, Pez used to coach, obviously, yep. uh, the LA United youth. You know, you got guys like uh, Daniel Prasad, Jai King, Charlie, Devereaux, you know, used to used to play there as Dakota well. Washington. There's Dakota, so many. Yeah. You and know. there's a lot on the other side as well. That's right. <laughs> obviously, Lockie Barr, you know, uh, Assad, Kasimovic. So, yeah, there were, they, and that kind of helped and you could kind of squeeze a lot of that into, mm. into it. But um, also getting to the history side uh, and all that. Now, I can't remember... I can't remember when it was. Um, I don't know. I think it was for that program or it might have been the the round before against Logan Lightning in the round of 32. But I actually got to speak to Raleigh Razic. Um, uh, oh, wow. Yeah, who of course was the 1974 Socceroos coach and, and used to coach Adelaide City as well back in the, back in the NSL and stuff. And that was kind of like, that's when you kind of see the benefit of these roles. You know, it's not so mm. much, look, obviously, you know, you want to get paid and, and stuff like that and you want to have paid work, but to actually make those connections that you're then going to use for the rest of your life and use also for me for like FPF, then mm. that's fantastic. So yeah. the That period, what did you what did you enjoy most about doing that role as a yep. media manager? We talk about the that one game, but the whole season was a big season. You had to capture mm. it and put it on social media as well. What was it like that whole season, just being involved and in being a part of the team, but... Yeah, it's almost like you're a part of the playing squad, but you're not actually um, my playing. Yeah, the thing the thing I miss most is uh, being around the playing group and and Pez and like like going to. We used to do a lot of stuff on a Thursday night training, um, and that was obviously like their final training before the game. And going there and almost like it's kind of just you, the players, Pez, yep. and maybe a couple other guys. And like they, and the players as well, like I've got so much respect for them because they just understood, they understood that, you know, <laughs> a, a lot of them, you know, like uh, getting, for example, like Zach Waters hates the camera. So he he, he won't, <laughs> you know, he, he just won't do interviews, right? Um, but a lot I of heard the other Nicholas, guys- Nicholas Booker hates it as well, doesn't he? No, no, he absolutely <laughs> no. loves it. Um, Angelo Paul also loves loves an interview. Um, just just letting you know. But um, you know, some of these guys love it. The other guys kind of hate mm. it. Um, so, uh, but you know, they all understand that. You know, like he's he's here to do the media stuff, and you need you know you need to respect that mm. and stuff. And and they you know they were, they were fantastic all year. I really I really really appreciated the way you know those that volunteered to kind of do the interviews did that because I think it's you know how how many NPL clubs do you kind of see out there you know, doing interview post game interviews with their players or, you know, pre game interviews. Like it's it's pretty rare, right? Mm. You know? Um yeah. Well I don't think a lot of people realise how much work is involved in it as well. And I That's think right. a lot of clubs want to get to that point. Yeah. Hopefully they do um eventually. It is a lot of work involved mm. in it. But it's good to see a club like LA City stepping up the game yeah. and you being involved in it as well. The um what led you out of it? Why why didn't you continue it on this season? Is it more focused on front page football? Uh, the main thing is is my uni. Yeah. Yeah. So um, because I had, as I mentioned before, I kind of dropped out. I actually briefly, it started 2021, I wasn't at uni. I was actually doing an internship um, where through a, through a member of my family who, who does a lot of like marketing and communications mm-hmm. work and she's kind of been a bit of a mentor for me with this stuff as well. Uh, and I kind of got a lot out of that. Um, but then... I was thinking about all, like, do I want to, you know, then I was asking myself, like, do I really want to be a journalist? Like, you know, am I sure? Like, if I dropped out of uni, this and the other. So, I briefly actually did psychology for a little bit. Um, and, but then I kind of, you know, I kind of had the moment where I was like, well, I don't know if I want to do this for kind mm. of five years. So, and then I was like, look, let's go back to the journalism degree, get it done. And yeah, I mean... The other thing was last year, I was doing about like six different things. Um, and it was because I was also coaching in Campbelltown, uh, which was <laughs> a funny thing because obviously I was, you know, doing the media for City, but but Campbelltown were really understanding and they, and they understood. Um, and then running was, front page football, they talked about all the games. That's right. All the teams. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> um, and then also, I still, and I still do it now, I still do the occasional piece for FTBL. So once a month, I do yeah. like an Aussies Abroad kind of summary. Um, which is good. Um, but also I work at a pub, um, you know, um, and I had um, another coaching role uh, that last year as well where I was doing some assistant coaching work uh, actually with Angelo, Angelo Paul uh, down at Pembroke. So yeah, I was doing a whole bunch of stuff. I was going driving around like every day, like, you know, going from 
yeah, <laughs> you know, here to here to here. And uh, yeah, it was just kind of <laughs> nuts. So I kind of said to myself this year, look, going to have to dial back. Yeah. Um, and yeah, at the moment, it's, 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 been, it's been much better. If I had to, just on your last question with the uh with the city role and how much like you know what i enjoyed for sure like the whole australia cup was fantastic like because being able to actually liaise with like at an fa level you know and you have Mm. like people from football australia like contacting you about you know what what kind of needs to be done and these are the regulations you need to follow and stuff and then like because then you feel like you're actually like okay i'm like a professional kind of media manager here Mm. um for those kind of weeks um i'll tell you a funny story was the Logan Lightning game was around a 32. Um, and that was, it was a tough game. Um, but I think, you know, we were better than them and we won 1 0. Anyway, afterwards, um, I wanted to get like a, you know, video of the, the team song. I didn't really know what to stand. So they, you know, at the Blue Eagles training, train, uh, change rooms there. And they were kind of all in a circle. I actually stood in the middle and kind of just went around with the phone. Yep. Uh, and I think it might have been Matt Mays who kind of came in and they kind of took their video from the top. So I'm actually in their video, um, which looks really kind of weird. But, you know, it worked anyway. Anyway, we did the team song, the video, um, about halfway. Like they started, you know, with the waters and stuff. I, I'm pretty sure I got sprayed and stuff like that. But then once it was done, whatever. And then I don't know why, but I was just kind of hanging around the changing room. Anyway... Uh, they were actually about to do their post game debrief. Obviously, I can't be there for that. Um, and then, and Pez, Pez kind of just turns around and he goes, "Christian, f- off." Uh, <laughs> but, but he was joking, right? Um, I, like I left, but it was all kind of sarcastic and stuff, and all the players started laughing. Um, so yeah, that, I, don't, I don't know. That that was one of those like, okay, you know, uh, that's that's how Pez can be. But yeah, for those who don't know, Pet Paul Pez. I think everyone that yeah. um, in the local community knows him, but he's got that personality, and he's when you know him well enough, mm. he's got a great personality. He's a funny guy. He he's does. a very nice guy. He does. I was always intimidated. I've always wanted to interview him on this podcast. Um, and earlier this year, did the NPL preview. Um, mm. I interviewed all the coaches. And I was very intimidated to try and get to him and chat to him, even though I had spoken to him at the grand finals yeah. and all that. But I was always messaging, no reply, nothing, nothing. Spoke yeah. to you. I remember speaking to you and also um, someone else. And I was like, just call the him. Trick, the trick with Pez yes. is you've got to call him. Yes, maybe we yeah. shouldn't give this out on the podcast, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Jesus um, Christ, he's probably going to call me tomorrow. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but gave him a buzz on the phone and I was, it was great. He gave his time, yeah. gave me 15 minutes before training, came down and interviewed him. Nicest guy. And I think he's one of those coaches, uh, myself and Antonius have put the, put it out there as ready in the, in an article that was written in the preview on Keep Up about yeah. the uh, who we should keep an eye out that would make it into the A-League. 100%. 100% he, will, he should be in the A-League very soon. Me and coach. Antonis... Uh, are the front of the Paul Pezos A League bandwagon, mm. and everyone's just got to get on board because yep, yeah. I'm on there. <laughs> yeah, and you're on now as well. Good, good. absolutely. Yeah. You know, uh, he deserves it. He's a, a great guy, and mm. I think he, if he can do it, um, it all comes down to it's, it's mm. easy to say because there's a lot of work involved in that. Absolutely, got to change a lot of things to be able to yeah. to be a full time coach, going into state a few days every week, and mm. it's a lot of work, but. Hopefully he's capable. He definitely is capable of doing that. Absolutely, uh, yeah. I mean, you look at. It wasn't just a, you know uh, that that we won the treble last year. It was more that just the football that they played. Like it was for me mm. for an NPL team. It was really really impressive. And that that game. I mean that Adelaide United game. You know my experience there. Like when you're out on the pitch before the yeah. game, and it was actually the whole day though for me because the whole day. I did about like four different posts on the social media that day and I was like just content, 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 mm. you know, because it's such a big game. We have to promote it. Um, I actually got at the ground. I remember Fabian Grucho, his team manager at LAC, kind of told me, he's like, what's going on with socials, mate, today? Like, you <laughs> posting everything, like, it's, it's going off. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know. So, um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it was just incredible to be standing on the pitch and like all these people are coming in, like, you know, at service, service FM, stadium like 3,000 people I think I hold 7,000 but even with 3,000 people there like it felt like you know, it was a big game this is a big yeah. occasion you know um, it was huge yeah it was um, and being on the pitch and just soaking in the atmosphere um, was was incredible and the shootout the penalty shootout I actually I asked Matt Mays and he said yeah you can if you want on the side of the pitch like you can kind of take a video from a distance of the shootout so yeah, I was able to do that as well. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get the outcome, but you know what he did. <laughs> but what an event, though! It was a massive day in South Australian football. Mm. Um, I was involved in it as well that day, and being there and just watching and soaking in and talking to people from interstate, 
on uh, that. I was, were, I was nervous as well. Yeah. Like, that was the thing as well. Everyone like, had eyes on it. <laughs> no, I know. But also, the funny thing is, like, the players, <laughs> obviously, players are under pressure to perform. Mm. The coach is under pressure to get result. But from a media perspective, you're also weirdly under pressure to make sure, like, you know, did you get the promotion right? You know, did you get the, you know, or did I miss something with that post? Mm. Or so? And it, it's weird things that you don't even think about if you're, like, <clears throat> consuming the content. But when you're putting it out there, you want to make sure that everything is, like, as, a, you know, kind of spec spec as possible. Yeah, absolutely. And those big moments are the best moments. Like, there's big moments that you've had it up like that in your working career, but big moments in your personal life where you enjoy watching football as a football fan mm-hmm. is uh, the World Cup. I know there's one moment there for you, which was, uh, I'm assuming it would stand out for you. We watched the uh, the um, the Denmark uh, game, Denmark game yep. together at the... Uh, Akaba Hotel. I think it was what four o'clock in the morning. No, that was, it was a three a.m. Three a.m. Yeah, yeah, that one there. Because I remember that after we won, it was we were on a high afterwards, and we were chanting afterwards. And um, I think a few people took their shirts off and were throwing their beers on each other because we got into the round of sixteen, mm. which was an incredible game. I was driving around listening to Land Down Under on loud for two hours until I worked out I wanted to go and get something to eat when I went to Villies. Yeah. But you were on your phone booking at that point, I think, uh, to go to Melbourne for yeah, the Federation yeah, Square. Antonis, yeah, <laughs> so it was me, you and Antonis watching the game and as soon as we could kind of see and the Fed Square stuff is just, it's just incredible. Like, yep. it was just unbelievable and, and to be there for the Argentina game was, was incredible um, and it kind of made me, I don't want to say believe again, but it was more like, you know, there's, Football in this country is always going to be... Mm. There's always going to be something there. You know, it's... Can you unlock it? But the passion's always there. There's a supporter base there. Um, I get... When it comes to Socceroos, I get quite emotional. Um, <laughs> because... Just because, like... And everyone says this, and they're right, is that the Socceroos, other than maybe, like, when Australia plays cricket in the Ashes, and maybe the Wallabies on an odd chance, but really, the Socceroos are the one national sporting team that really can unify the country mm. um and to see like all the live sites for the yeah. argentina game you know it's just it was just incredible um and then yeah to be involved in it was was something else um but yeah the denmark game the i actually had a cold uh i don't even know if i told you because i don't know if you remember i actually oh, had did a, i get sick from you maybe <laughs> maybe because i had a tissue and like every two seconds and i was kind of like mm, don't want to see johnny like you know. <laughs> yeah i'm kind of like but uh you know and the game's going on and the first half played out and Denmark and controlling it and you're like, mm. we're, we're done here. Like we had we had our good win against Tunisia, but and, let's And then honest. we were watching yeah. the other game as well on our phones. That's right. <laughs> and and when Tunisia scored against France and we hadn't scored yet, it was like, okay, this is it, isn't it? Mm. And then two minutes later, <laughs> Lecky Lecky does what he does. Uh and I just yeah, there's there was a video the Tunisia game, which was which was really ideal for Australia because it was an 8.30 game on Saturday night. Mm. So everyone was going to watch it. It was going to happen. And Leo actually... Fe- I, was, I watched it with Leo at the Arca Bar. Actually, I was there too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we did see each other there as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's, <laughs> there was actually a video that he posted when, when Miss Duke scored and he did like a little kind of reel of the room and then he panned to me and I like literally looked in the camera and went like, come on, like straight <laughs> like into the camera. And, and it was just like, I've really, yeah. So I've got that real passion side which comes out when I'm kind of supporting my team. But the the Denmark thing, a day later, when I watched the highlights back and Lecky scored in the place and I actually like genuinely had tears. Mm. Um, and like, not, not like where I was like crying out loud, but just kind of like, you know, tears weeping down my face. And um, yeah, it's just kind of stuff like that. And it's also, there's this, um, there's this great uh, Copper 90. You'll probably be aware of them. Mm. Yeah, they did this great and Ellie Menjum and he did this great uh, documentary a few years back kind of on like, you know, uh, the Uruguay game and November, you know, November 16, 2005 and, and all of that, uh, which my dad was actually at, um, you know. Uh, and every time I watch that and there's a bit in it where, you know, they talk about Johnny Warren and stuff and it's just like the tears, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know. Um, so for me, that's always like, that sort of thing has always been in the back of my mind when I do, you know, FPF and stuff. Yeah. It's, it's that, it's that dream for all of us. Cause we want, you know, we want Australian football to be, you know, as, as watched as, you know, well liked as much as possible in the, in the country. What do you yeah. believe, um, is the reason why you so passionate, like so emotional when you think about the soccer race? What do you believe is that reason? I actually, it? yeah, I think as well, there was actually, there was another, there's another video where Ange Postacoglu, who I absolutely love, um, and when he, it was at the Confederations Cup in 2017 and Optus got it behind the scenes, um, look into his kind of pre-match chat. 
uh, before one of the games and he was talking about, you know, basically when when the players, you know, and he was talking to the players and he was saying, when you go out there, like you represent, you know, your parents, like, mm. but also what was really poignant about it was that all of these players, you know, guys like Aziz Bayic, Milos Dejanek, um, you know, even trying to think, trying to think of uh, some other, some other players. Ooh. Some other Socceroos. Oh, a one Bill. a one Bill would be a good one. But also back then, there were, there were some others and they all had cultural backgrounds. Mm. They all had cultural backgrounds. And basically, what he was, I kind of inferred it as what he was saying was, when you go out there, you're representing all the different cultural roots that we have in our country. Mm. You know, the multiculturalism of Australia and the Socceroos embody that more than anyone. And I don't know about you, but my both of my grandparents migrated here in the 50s from from Same as South me, Italy, yeah. right? Uh, as is the case for a lot of us here in South Australia, um, who are Italian. Um, and, you know, it's like even Antonis, like he came here when he was 12. So mm. even now writers have like a, a background, mm. you know, a cultural background. So for me, it's always been, there's that deeper thing about it where the Socceroos are also, you know, like I don't, I don't really support Italy like that much to be no. honest. Like yeah. even though like at the, you know, the Euros, obviously when they won it, I was kind of, I watched the final and stuff. But for me, the Socceroos have always been like, my number one kind of football team. Absolutely. Yeah. Same with, I don't know if your grandparents said it, but my grandfather yeah. was like, Australia gave me my new home and I support right. Australia. Even he didn't support, support Italy no, as right. well. Yeah. So it's interesting to see. And that's what I think a lot of people, mm. I think that's what brought, brought everyone together as well during that World Cup in 2022. Um, yeah. Just that everyone united. And that's what I love about football. That's right. That's mm. exactly right. And I think, yeah, in Australia, when you look at, yeah, you look at all the the local clubs and and back in the NSL where we had all the clubs mm. with like a really clear like Sydney Croatia. Now it's Sydney United, but it was very clear where their background was and where their roots were. Um, and look now today, it's got some negative aspects to it, of course. We look at what happened like in the Australia Cup final last year, but you know for the most part, when it's harnessed the right way, you know it's 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 really unique. Mm, absolutely and uh, that's what I love about local games mm. here in Adelaide as well in the NPL and that's what I think mm. you would be in, enjoying being involved in LA Croatia Raiders FK Belgrade yeah. LA Blue Eagles um, where your mm. dad played and you played as well so it's uh, all those heritage background the cultural background is yeah. great and the food's awesome as well yeah and, and <laughs> for yeah no and, and for us like with FPF also like we want to be unique mm. so like okay you might do an interview with the player, but like, what's his story? Mm. Like, has he got so, like, the one that we did uh, in coordination with you about Jaden Labasso? Like, you know, for me, I read something like that and I'm like, people need to know about this. Mm. Like, in New South Wales, Victoria, they should know about this. You know what I mean? Like, it shouldn't just be amongst our local community. Um, so, and, and I just think there's, there's a lot of guys out there who play locally around the country who probably have all these fascinating stories which just aren't told because mm. we don't have the football media here in the country to do that. Um, but that's where I hope you know, we can come in. So, yeah. Absolutely. And it's good to, to team up with you for that one as well yeah, to, yeah. to get that story even further. And then the advertiser did one as well on Jay yeah, Labasso, yeah. which is great that mm. now the non-football community are seeing that's it right. as well. Yeah. So, it's uh, yeah. So it all stems from things like yourself, what you're doing. So, you hopefully... Front page football will be even bigger in the next couple of years as well. It'll be good to see. And mm. what is your future? What are you What are you looking forward to doing the next phase? <laughs> yeah, well, I've got obviously, you know, uh, as as everyone should, you know, you've got to have a plan. Um, but yeah, it's kind of just you know keep keep writing, you know, mm. keep giving opportunities to people, um, keep podcasting, um, and just keep making connections. You know, um, probably. I don't know if there's anyone listening to this who's who's around my age, like doing journalism or anything, but my advice would be like never turn down an opportunity. Like, you <laughs> <Never>. know, and <laughs> and also every time like you get a phone number for someone or anything like that, like save it. Like even if you think you're not gonna use it. Mm. Like you know, um the contact list I've kind of been able to build up over the last like couple of years has been pretty impressive. Uh and it's because you just kind of ex you know try and get as much as you can out of the people that you know, you know, mm. um, and, you know, whether it's whether it's interviews, whether it's just like getting information about stuff so you can keep informed as a journalist. Yeah. yeah. It was one of those ones that you think back at now and go, geez, did I really get that? Do I really have their number or did I really get to chat with them? Is it mm. one of those moments you think or one of those people? 
I don't know. I actually did. It was probably um, so back in 2021. I got the opportunity, uh, and I'm thankful for LA United for this, where I got basically what they set up for me after I requested was to do six interviews with like six of the kind of youngest talents at the time at Adelaide United mm. in the first team we were playing. Uh, and I did it as like a massive kind of exclusive piece. It's still up there uh, on the website. Um, so like I've got, you know, Mohamed Torre was one of the guys I interviewed. So his, his number's in there now. I don't know if that works because he's in France, but <laughs> you know, um, you know what I mean? So there, there's one for example, but yeah, like it's, it's kind of, you might be able to get, you know, a young player to interview early on in their career. And if you keep their number or something mm. and they turn out to be a well beater, well, it's like, hey, mm. you know, when he was younger, I got the chance to interview him. So, yeah. How cool is that? Love it. And uh, well, we're going to end it all off now. Let's end it with the kicking it questions. One question that, two questions that I'll ask oh, every yeah. single yeah. guest. I'm, <laughs> I'm a, I'm, I know you're across it, but I don't know if you thought about it though, have you? No, I haven't. No, not. you haven't. All right. Well, that's great then. I love that because then I love that moment where people's minds ticking at the end. <laughs> um, which footballer would you love to kick with on the park? Anyone in the world? Um, I have to say Eden Hazard. And so, as people close to me will know, I'm a Chelsea fan. I'm not, as I said earlier, I'm mm. not very happy with them at the moment. But um, <laughs> uh, basically, the prime Eden Hazard years were like completely something else. Like he was, for me, he was very close to like the Messi kind of Ronaldo level. He wasn't quite there, but yeah. And so, me and my dad are both Chelsea fans. So, we get up for, for, for every game, um, you know, 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Who cares? We'll be up. Um, I don't know about anymore after what kind of happened earlier this week. But, um, you know, it's, yeah, it's uh, kind of, you know, something that, um, yeah, we, we've always done. Um, and, yeah, Hazard was, was just incredible to watch yeah. every week. Well, name two people that uh, you would love to kick with on a Saturday night and have a couple of drinks with. Anyone? Um, I know you did it with the 2022... Uh, triple winners in Adelaide City. We did, yeah. we did, yeah. Boy, um, that was like four nights in a row from what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, after the uh, after the league title, after the Comets game, I, I only had enough in me for one night um, <laughs> and then I think that was enough. Um, but the Mobbury game, we, we definitely had a night as well. I could say, if you want some information, that Bradley Corber and Daniel Brassan certainly know how to... Uh, how to kick it on a Saturday <laughs> night. Let's just put it that way. Bradley Corbett, probably the funniest thing, one of the funniest things out of the uh, the, the the media stuff I did was uh, after the Comets Grand Final, Bradley Corbett does an interview and he's holding a, I think it was a Cooper's uh, can of beer or something during the interview whilst asking the questions. It's the funniest thing. Funniest thing. Um, so yeah, those two definitely... Uh, like, yeah, they 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 like it on a Saturday. So Bressan and Corbo, all right, Bressan cool. and Corbo. Yeah, I'll keep them in mind for future. If yeah. I need a big party and want someone to rev it all up, yeah, yeah, nice. But who would you be your two that you would love to? Someone locally, someone internationally. Someone locally, someone. Okay. Uh, for there's limit. There's it's very broad. You can do whatever, whatever you want and. So internationally, internationally, I'm going to go a little bit left field. Um, so when I was younger, I really loved the show Family Guy. Uh, which is pretty... I love you know, Yeah, you have to have like a certain kind of, you know, uh, comedic kind of outlook, I think, to, to kind of understand it. But uh, Seth MacFarlane, who also like did the voice of Ted, mm. you know, um, he's always been like, just because he's just the way he is in his comedy and the way he sees things, I'd always think he'd be he'd be fascinating and kind of, um, yeah, I guess kick it with yeah. that stuff. Um, now, locally, whoa, that's <laughs> that's a harder one. Um See, Ted would be fun to kick it with. Oh, yeah. Gee, I know. I know. Um, locally, locally. I'm not too sure. I'm honestly not too sure. Um, footballers, though. Um, it could be anyone. It doesn't have to be uh, footballers. It could be anyone. Yeah. But, you it could know. be Leo. Yeah. You haven't yeah. seen him in a while. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I'm just trying to think of someone different. Um <laughs> Uh, I think I think one of the uh, you know would be interesting just something different. I think one of the Spanish boys at Adelaide United might be okay. Yeah, maybe Isaias. Just see what he's like on a Saturday night. I think he'll be it'll be funny and oh, yeah. Like, what's he like off the pitch? Can you imagine the food as well. 
does that too, like yeah. paellas or something like that. Maybe? Yeah. See, yeah. I would invite Marcos Flores and uh, Marcella Caruska for the barbecue, mm. Argentinian barbecue. Mm. I've seen their Instagram stories and it looks delicious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wouldn't mind getting invited to them. They're, they're my two. If I had to choose two, they'll be them two, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> um, but great choices, mate. It's been great chatting to you about your story and about Front Page Football and uh, the background of it because we all consume that content, or most of us do, and uh, it's I good so, to know... Yeah. <laughs> Well, hopefully we do. Uh, hopefully more people do. But um, it's good to know the background of it and what's actually going on into it and the people behind it because there's a lot of work that goes into it, a lot of this blood, sweat and tears literally um, to get that content out there and promote the game. So it's good to see the background of it. And it's good, good eye-opener for me to see what happens there as well and uh, what you've been through to get to it. Yeah, it's, uh, there, it is a lot of work. It mm. is a lot of work behind the scenes um, and particularly when... When you're like me and you put like a lot of pressure, not a lot of pressure on yourself, but you want things to be as, yeah, you know, perfect as possible, then, you know, it, it kind of factors in a bit more, yeah. What, uh, what's the best way to get in t- touch with you for anyone listening that wants to be involved and uh, start writing, podcasting with you guys at Front Page Football? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so, our website is frontpagefootball.net. Um, and if you go on the website on the tabs at the top, you'll find the contact um, tab. Uh, and if you go in there, you can fill out an application form and, uh, yeah, then... I'll get back to you as soon as possible, basically. Um, but yeah, uh, then we're also on Twitter um, and Instagram. That's at Front PG Football. We're on Facebook, Front Page Football. Um, where else? LinkedIn, um, TikTok. We're on there as well. TikTok, so, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're kind of everywhere, yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, get involved and uh, hopefully anyone listening can uh, start writing for not only local football, but Australian football in general. That's right. And mm. and not, not just writers as well. Um, obviously, like even social media kind yep. of creators, if you're interested in that. Um, and even, you know, things like graphic design, mm. photography, uh, web design, stuff like that. So, yeah. Might need to get some, one of those to help me as well, maybe. I was, uh, <laughs> by, the way, by the way, I was just thinking as you're talking, Jason Cummings might not be too bad to maybe kick it with on a Saturday night. Actually, yes. Yeah. Jason yeah. Cummings, the cum dog might come the out. Dog. Yep. Yep. For those that don't know who the cum dog is, and thinking, what the hell is that nickname? Go and check it out. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it, the uh, His wrestling name. It's a very fun uh, personality. But anyway, thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you for joining <laughs> me. Um, uh, thank you for joining me. I, you've had me on your podcast in the past, but yeah. uh, this time it's your, you're on mine. So thank you for joining me, mate. It's been a pleasure talking to you and uh, all the best for the future. All good. Thanks, Johnny. And uh, yeah, really, really appreciate you uh, having me. And uh, yeah, you're doing a really good job with the pod. Thank you so much, mate. That was Front Page Football's Christian Marchetti. Make sure you subscribe to Kicking It Local wherever you get your podcasts so you can get a taste of the SA football community. Plus, follow at Kicking It Local SA on Instagram and Twitter so you don't miss any of the action. See you soon.